Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay, the Housewife Historian, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Bravo channels, the Real Housewives, and also, I'm not sure if anyone is watching The Valley. It is on Peacock. Um, I love it. And I've watched the second episode. It's like a, it's a spinoff, sort of, of Vanderpump Rules, because it's all of, uh, like, Jax and Brittany, and they have kids now, and they're living in homes in the Valley raising their kids and a lot of them are like newly married couples that are integrating a small child to their relationship so they're sort of covering the struggles um, of parenting and trying to have a relationship because it seems like all of them are on the verge of divorce. Brittany and Jack separated after the season um, was done filming and then I think there's another separation on the cast so I'm surprised to um, hear that it's like kind of sad I hope they end up together but um we also, of course, have news coming from Real Housewives of Potomac. We're going to be getting their reunion pretty soon. And we don't have a lot going on in Housewives because there's really just not um, any seasons airing. We wrapped up Beverly Hills. We got the three part there. And now Potomac and then Bev er, New Jersey will start um, in May. So I think you guys are going to probably be bored in the next month and a half because who is everyone going to talk about? <laughs> um. Is anyone watching the Valley? Comment if you're watching the Valley. No, maybe, kind of. Uh, Tamara, I'm I'm wondering when the OC is going to air because they should be done filming. I would think any time now. We've seen Alexia and Tamara filming together, um, but I can't think. Probably six months from when they're done filming is when we would get the new season. So it's going to be kind of a boring summer. I wonder if they're forcing us to watch the Olympics. I know that NBC is a big network that's invested in the Olympics and will be airing them. So. Oh, Yo-Yo's watching. Awesome. Oh, Barbara didn't like it. Oh, Barbara, I'm sorry. <laughs> I liked it too. I don't know why. I just, I don't know, because it is challenging. Like once you're with somebody and then you have a child and for whatever reason, it changes every dynamic in your relationship. So it's like interesting to kind of look at them and be like, you know, how one couple is getting along and they seem happy. Like the, um, Oh, I think she was like a pageant girl and she's married to the one gentleman and they seem happy. They're on like twins or triplets or something. And then there's Jesse and his wife, which they I think are going to be separating. And then Jackson, Brittany. I really like Brittany for whatever reason. I've just kind of fallen in love with her. She's so sweet and funny. At first, when I saw her on the red carpet, she was talking about separating from Jax and their relationship issues and she like did a shot and I was like looking at her kind of sideways but after watching the valley I'm like oh no she's like a good mom and a good wife Jax is a mess Tay Tay said she's watching the valley <laughs> okay then you guys watched last week when Jax had a boys night and he um invited Kristen's current boyfriend and her ex-boyfriend Alex who I don't even think she's been broke up that long from but they broke up and she hooked up with her new boyfriend and they are trying to have a baby. And Jax is sort of, I don't want to say like outing them, but he is a little bit. And he says it in a funny way. Like Kristen sort of forces any boyfriend she has to be like friends of the group. And she makes Jax invite them to like all the guy things. Like it's important that her boyfriend fits in with the guys. And then what happens when they break up, right? Well, now you have Jax and Alex that are still friends. And now Kristen has a new boyfriend. She doesn't want Jax's you know, hanging out with the old boyfriend. I know some are disappointed after watching The Valley because it's not like Vanderpump Rules, but to me, The Valley is more relatable. I actually really agree uh, with your comment, Yo Yo. To me, like I said, it does feel relatable because, um, you know, I have like a four year old. So I get it when you have two different parenting styles. Um, for example, I think it was Jesse. Was it Jesse or was it? Um, I'm not sure. The one they were teaching the little girl to ride the bike and the wife had sent him a YouTube video, like how to teach your kid how to ride a bike. Right. And she's like, did you watch the YouTube video? And he's like, no, I don't think like I need a YouTube video to teach her how to ride. Like, I'm just going to put her on here and put her feet on the pedals. Like, how bad could it be? You know, and I feel like the women especially downplay in front of the cameras and they just like kind of give them a look but you know on the inside they're like fuming and you do kind of wonder like what would this dynamic look like if there wasn't cameras around you right now but you can tell the tension's high even when it comes to teaching your kid how to ride a bike like if you can't get along with someone and they agitate your whole soul that's rough 
I always had a hard time watching a new series. I know, Barbara, I feel the same way. I like to stick to the things that I already know. But I think because of everything that transpired because of Vanderpump Rules, I kind of had a little bit more of a better because I never used to follow Vanderpump Rules because I always felt like it was geared towards a little bit of like a younger genre. But um, I got into it over the last couple of years. And The Valley, I really just watched because there was nothing else to watch. I watched The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip with the New York ladies. I can't, I think it was called, um, was it called The Legacy? It was only so many episodes. I don't know, like five episodes. And it was really good. It made me laugh. I'm going to be honest with you. I started in the middle on accident because I didn't know it was only five episodes. And I came upon the first episode where all of the ladies, they are in St. Bart's. And um, again, it's like the New York ladies. So it's Dorinda and you know the whole vibe and it was just hilarious they made me laugh because they've all been together for so long like Sonia and Dorinda and there was one girl that they added I want to say her name was Megan but I can't she was only on like one season way way early on but she's a little cuckoo and it was funny Kelly thank you yes Kelly Kelly is like I was dying laughing because I don't know Dorinda or Sonia, but I've been watching them on TV so long that when there's like a dynamic in the group and everyone thinks something about somebody and they can all tell each other like through their eyes, like looking at each other, like, oh my gosh, you know? And Kelly was so, I don't even know the word to use, but she was like upset about something and she was like, no, I need Dorinda right now. I need Dorinda she's, I need her to comfort me or something. But like two days earlier, she was like going off on Dorinda and called her like a see you next Tuesday. And it was just very crazy. So yeah, the legacy was the only other thing there was to watch on Peacock. And I don't like to watch reruns all like that. There's only a couple of, you know, franchises that I would really rewatch like that. Kelly said, I tried to watch it, only got the second episode halfway through. I'm so over these shows. I know it's like a shame, Kelly, because Bravo has such a good thing. I just think that they are sloppy. I think they just need to, like, do some work. P.S. Mm, I forgot to tell you guys. This is some tea. It's about Andy Cohen. So, basically, if you guys follow me, you know I post blind items from the Crazy Days and Nights website. So, they're not, like, it's not from random people that are just DMing me or other blogs or whatever. It's like literally um, a website that's dedicated to blind items. It's been around for like over a decade. And they had a blind item that people were relating to Andy Cohen. And it was something along the lines of basically watch what happens live was getting canceled. That Andy Cohen was going to do like a 60 stops in 30 days type of book tour type of situation. Um, they didn't say it didn't say he was going to be like leaving Bravo, but there's a little bit of an insinuation there. I'm going to have to try to find the original blind item, but I was pretty sure it was about Andy Cohen. And then yesterday I came across it was a thread of somebody that said they've moved. Watch what happens live to three o'clock a.m. on Bravo Network that they're no longer putting the the lot the watch what happens live at like the normal 10 or 11 o'clock at night. and. They even went into like the Bravo, um, I guess the website to see like the schedule of all the shows and it surely was listed for 3 a.m. And somebody commented and, and said some sort of, that's not true. He was, cause they said he's also not live on Cyrus radio anymore. He's not going to be. And someone's like, that's not true. I just heard him live yesterday at like 10 a.m. And a couple of other people commented, well, the gentleman had tweeted at Bravo at the Cyrus radio and they responded and said, he's not going to be live in the mornings like that anymore. So that means either he's not going to be putting out new content on the Cyrus radio or he is, and it's just going to be at a different time of day. You guys know, typically your highest rated shows are going to have like more of a, you know, better time slot. Um, I don't know what's going on with Bravo because I haven't had a chance to do much digging. I just ran across that yesterday and I thought you guys might find that interesting. Um, yeah, 3 a.m. And it even says on the Bravo website, you can see it says new under watch what happens live because we know that Andy Cohen doesn't actually film them live, which I think is a little disappointing. Remember the days when you used to be able to tweet when somebody was on Watch What Happens Live during a commercial break? You could tweet and they would like see it come back from commercial break. 
And those days are just over. Um, and I think that's a little disappointing. They say he shoots like five episodes in like one sitting, which I think makes for not as much energy for him as a host. Um, I did think he was cleaning up his act a little bit on Watch What Happens Live. Like he was dressing different. He was looking a little bit more him, him old self. I think Andy Cohen's probably just been, I mean, he works a lot, guys. If you think about it, two kids, and then he does Watch What Happens Live. He does every single reunion, plus the Traders reunion, plus his, you know, everything else in addition. I just think that he's probably burnt out. And when he, by the time he would be back to film Watch What Happens Live, I just don't think he could keep that same energy that he's, you know, has in the reunions or have you. It's just too much. I've often said they needed to bring somebody else in to like partner with him to sort of take the reunions on or take other franchises because he can't, he doesn't get the same energy for every single franchise and every Watch What Happens Live episode. I mean, there's been nights, I remember when Jackie and um, I think it was Margaret were on Watch What Happens Live and it was the Real Housewives of New Jersey and they just flat out cut the show short and was like, well, we don't really have much more to talk about. So we're just going to cut this episode short. Like what? Like who does that? That is not a normal thing to do on, you know, a major network. I have been thinking that possibly really wasn't him. I'm not sure Kelly. Cause the um, thread that I read was recent. It was really, really recent. And the only reason that I took it even more serious was because there, again, there was a response from the, verified Bravo account on Twitter that responded about Andy like not being um, on Cyrus radio in the mornings anymore. And I'm pretty sure it's called like Andy's radio show, isn't it? It's something like Andy live or Andy radio, Cyrus radio, something along those lines. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but I think that I don't know what I think is going to happen with all these Bravo shows. I just can't think that Bravo's I understand that maybe they're not making the money in views that they used to because we have to consider that standard cable is no longer a thing. Um, Bravo's been looking for a way to compete with streaming services for a long time. And I think Peacock is really the way to do it. People like Peacock. I don't understand why can't, I don't know. Why not move everything to Peacock? What's the difference? Why do we have to watch it on Bravo? If Bravo's like a sinking ship, let's put them on Peacock and see who lives. I mean, what's, I don't understand other situation is that we have to remember how much money Bravo makes off of the ladies simply from their own endorsements that they promote on the show. So people like Kyle Richards, who, you know, does a lot of outside endorsements or people that have their own company and they started it when they were on the show and Bravo's getting, you know, percentages of all of these different endeavors that the housewives and all these different franchises do. So when you add all of that up collectively, you have a bigger piece of what Bravo is pulling in as like profits um, versus just looking at the ratings. I know. I often think that too, Kelly, but I do think that there has to be like some sick minded people <laughs> also in that executive because, because they can't be just letting Andy Cohen, you know, his say go all the time. Um, I'm sure that he has a, v a very big voice in the boardroom about the housewives, I'm sure. Um, but I don't know. I just can't think that he's in there, like, pulling a lot of strings. But he could be. I don't know. I think maybe earlier in the days when housewives were first starting and they kind of, I don't want to say they, like, credited Andy Cohen, but in a way, you know, they sort of did. And I just, he's lost his touch. <laughs> he's lost his touch. I think they need to reevaluate. And I do agree with you that it's sinking in a way that they've kept some women too long, other women not long enough. And a lot of times it seemed like those decisions were based off of some sort of personal relationship or event um, that pertains or affects or includes Andy Cohen. So in that, I definitely agree with you. But... I just think it's like every department in Bravo is like, even their vetting department, like when they've hired Jenny from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and she had all those racist posts on Facebook from like not even a year ago. It's like, how did that get past your our vetting department? <laughs> He's let many pe great people go. I agree with you, Kelly. And, and I think, again, that has been detrimental to the franchises at times when he's been 
you know, playing favorites and keeping women that they should have let go a long time ago, like Ramona. I was surprised to see, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I'm glad that they did air it, but she was on the legacy. They didn't give her a terrible edit, but you know, you know, Ramona, you don't know how she is. And if you go back and watch the legacy on Peacock, wow, you will surely see they threw one hell of a party in St. Bart's and they didn't even know anyone. <laughs> like that is, was a little wild to me. Like they literally had a house, house full of people at St. Bart's um, the last day that they were there. <laughs> and it was just crazy to me that they could find all of these people last minute to come party at this like mansion that Bravo was you know, paying for and renting. And it was just a little, a little crazy to me. I thought like, wow, what? how do they get all these people to come here? Like, what are they leaving them here with? I'm just joking. Hold on one second. I'm gonna give you guys some camera time. I'm just gonna find my charger. What else do you guys want to talk about? Have you guys seen anything else in the headlines this weekend? Any good gossip? We had drama, of course, between Teddy Mellencamp and Wendy from The Real Housewives of Potomac, but not too much drama. I mean, I love anyone that outs some you know, messages. That's just me. So I was enjoying that. That was, that was a nice little treat. See here, guys, one second. And then we can get on Twitter and see what else has been going on. Thoughts on Tay Tay, you bad. Um I don't I like Shayna. Um I don't know if that happened or not. I mean, I could see Shayna being very open to it. I feel like John Mayer would have been a little less open to it because there have been so many rumors and so much proof of Andy Cohen and John Mayer sort of having this secret relationship between the two of them. Um, he was actually even at Andy Cohen's baby shower. He was like the only guy there. All of it was women. Everyone was women except for like John Mayer. Um, he's, I think him and Andy even have a house together in the Hamptons that they purchased together photos online of Andy Cohen and John Mayer and Andy's mom ironing his clothes, like lots and lots of signs pointing that they could potentially be more than just friends. So I don't know if he would hook up with her. I definitely think she would hook up with him for sure. And somebody said, going back and watching the old Vanderpump rules really like reminds you of how much she wanted to be famous. Like, wanted to be famous so again i don't think she would object to it <laughs> by any means but i don't know if he would especially if he like had a thing for andy you know what i mean i don't think he would want to give andy the wrong impression you know what i mean like if he was feeling andy he wouldn't want andy to think that he was all into girls like that he would want andy to think he was in him a little bit that's just what i think what do you guys think about it. Is it true that Marge and Jackie are friends in real life again? <laughs> or is it just a rumor? Um, let me see. I okay, so I don't know. I think that there were rumors that Jackie and Marge only fell out for a storyline, for ratings, um, to give themselves some more attention we know that jackie went from a full-time member to part-time and we know that margaret doesn't have a whole lot going on just because they don't have you know she's a, they're a little bit older they're a little bit more um they don't have their family they don't have a family dynamic to film or talk about because you know the kids i don't think his children talk to her and uh we see a little bit of her son but really not a whole lot and so therefore neither one of them have a whole lot going on um and so it was rumored that Teresa's attorney had visited Jackie during a book signing. Like she had, when she came out with her book, she did some book signings. And it was rumored that he had approached her and suggested 
that she fall out with Margaret, you know, that would be good for both of them. That's the allegation. So really people are saying that they never fell out in the first place, that it was all just sort of for the show, for a storyline. And it gives everyone a little bit more, it gives the whole show a little bit more mess, if you will, because of the fact that now you're gonna have Jackie outing Margaret and the other women for the things that they may or may not have, you know, had their hand in over the last couple of years. So hypothetically, Jackie and Margaret, all of them probably would have got together, especially Jackie and Margaret, and went over what things Jackie would disclose and what things she would not disclose to Teresa and Jennifer about what transpired with Louie's ex and who met up with her and when did they meet up with her and to who gave it to, you know, who gave these videos to who. And there's just a lot of questions I think that could be asked about Margaret and Jackie and that whole situation. And so they came up with a couple of things that they would come out with and say, one of those things is going to be that, um, that whole side met up at Margaret's house the day before the reunion just to go over everything. And Jackie is going to come clean and say that she was the first one to really meet up with Vanessa, Louis's ex. And it kind of gives Teresa the vindication that she's looking for, I think, as it pertains to um, the viewers, maybe. Um, but people saying that they are made up again, I know that they were seen at a movie showing um recently and david yonte from behind the velvet rope did mention that in the photo each of them are standing on the other end so margaret's on one end and jackie's on the other end and that i think all of the ladies may have been invited and just not all of them went and it just so happened that that's the way that it it looked so i'm not sure i guess we'll see this season we can be a better judge of if we think that it was a genuine breakup but i feel like jackie and margaret would go dirty with one another i definitely think that margaret would not be scared to get a little dirty more scared than jackie and we haven't really seen them going at each other that's the only thing that i don't you know i don't know what do you guys think <laughs> what's everyone else's thoughts on it do you think it's a real fight have you guys been following the whole P. Diddy thing? I mean, who's not following P. Diddy thing? I was just wondering because I like to know um, from my listeners, like, if what you guys are following. Because Marsh says it was Jackie who first met with Louis X. Yes. And I guess I think that Jackie's, like, admitting to that. She's saying that that is actually, in fact, true. But I don't think that Jackie – I think Jackie met with her first, and that's how Margaret and all the other ladies got in contact with her. And then Margaret is – and then Jackie's going to say, you know, that's all she did, yada, yada, yada. And it's going to probably inevitably look like this was, I'm sure editing is going to like factor in, but I'm thinking that Teresa and Louie's hopes are, this will look as if um, Margaret and them had known and had these videos on Louie before he was even on the show and that they sort of pressured her to bring him on the show so they could explain both him you know what i mean so i guess you guys will have to decide what your thoughts are um do you guys like karen's hair for the real housewives of potomac uh reunion she's got her hair really short and really sort of like a blonde gray almost sorry i just saw that <laughs> Pretending to not be friends for soil makes sense. I think so too. It, it does make sense. And I think that they try to do it gracefully, but try to give us a little bit of mess. Um, I think that Margaret and uh, Jackie would be the ones, you know, who else was going to, who else was going to do it? Like if somebody had to do it, it had to been done. And we do know that over the years, we, over the last couple of seasons, the drama that's been brought to us is from the Gorgas and the Judices. So, obviously count all of them out because they feel like they've been working for the last couple of years so that would leave margaret and jackie who's been biting and and scratching tooth and nail to try to get a full-time position back we know she doesn't need the money right um so that would be the most easiest cut and dry clean fake sort of 
drama um, that they could probably really come up with, if you ask me. Jen F switched teams too. Yes, she did, Barbara. Thank you for um, saying that. That's right, she did switch teams, which is a, is not surprising when you actually find out that she wasn't best friends with Margaret. Margaret was best friends with Jen Fessler's sister. So Margaret, and in, in, in our minds, before I knew that, in my mind, I'm thinking that Margaret and Jen Fessler are as close as Margaret and her other best friend, um, Laura Lee. Mm. There's a DM, Kelly that's circulating, it's of Teresa corresponding with a fan, I think. Um, and she mentioned that she was offered um, a show, like a spinoff, but that she declined because I think the girls were like in therapy at that time. I'm not sure if maybe that was after like she came home and, um, and Joe went away. And then when he was like deported maybe because I don't know if there's a date on it. I'll have to double check, but it's definitely circulating online. And so she was, she did state that she was offered a spinoff. I think she stated it two different times, but declined um, because of the girls. And um, again, I think they were in therapy. And then I also don't think that her one daughter, uh, Gabriella, likes to be on camera. I just get that feeling from her. She just doesn't, she's, if you notice, the two older girls, Gia and Melania, like they're very, comfortable in front of the camera and their personality. And I think Melania has like a great TikTok. And she makes a lot of good content and has a lot of following. But the two younger girls seem to shy a little bit away from the cameras and, and press and that sort of thing. Um, so just a different dynamic with the girls. It wasn't like she had four Kardashians, right? <laughs> Where every single one of them wants to be famous, <laughs> including the mom. So that's what that spinoff was about. I don't know how those spinoffs like work if that offer stays standing, but I'm sure hypothetically, you know, she would have been offered it at some point by by the network, um, even if it was a spinoff like for their I'm surprised they didn't do like not necessarily like a whole season, but like how they do the ultimate girls trip. I mean, they only filmed for two weeks. I'm surprised they didn't take like Teresa and the girls when she was like a single mom and film them for a couple of weeks, like going on vacation. I know that they did the one with, uh, when they went to visit their dad in Italy after he came home from prison, but I'm just surprised the network didn't utilize that more. I'm hearing of this recently. Um, it just was like outed. <laughs> the DM, I think like came out maybe a week ago, maybe a little bit longer. I know David Yons have covered it on Behind the Velvet Rope about Teresa getting possibly, you know, being offered a spinoff as well and declining. So I don't know if that's in Bravo's future or not, to be honest with you, but I think that that's where that's like circulating is from the, I don't know if I can find it or not. Let me see if I can try to find the actual DM so that you guys could hear it. I'm pretty, I mean, it, that's how it reads. I read it myself, <laughs> but I like to read it to you guys so that you guys can form your own opinion as well, because that's important. Um, yes, yes, Je oh, Jen Fessler, I wanted to say again about Jen Fessler, um, her sister was best friends with Margaret. Jen Fessler was not best friends with Margaret, even though they came on the show and told us that, right? And if you remember, Jen Fessler went on Watch What Happens Live and, and basically every single question she was asked, refused to say anything negative about Margaret. She was like, I, I'm not going to speak ill of Margaret. And it was like every answer. And I think the feedback she got on that was not great that she, you can't have like an alliance with that, with somebody like that on a show and try to be new. It's just not going to work out great. Um, let me see. I don't know if I'll be able to find it or not. No, I don't see it. I'll have to look somewhere else and see if I can find it and just take a screenshot of it. Portia Williams coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta, even though she's in the middle of a divorce. Um, and Simon has now subpoenaed um, her text message records from her from Portia to NBC producers 
um, in production and stuff. He wants them for their divorce. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh, Portia. And then he tried to say that she and her mother brought a pew pew man with them to get her stuff from there from his house. And she said it was security. <laughs> Trace. Also, Candace Dillard Bassett resigned, which I thought was a little crazy, only because bad timing. Don't we normally wait until the reunion airs before we resign? Because if we know that you're not coming back next year, how invested can we really be in you? Um, Ariana Maddox also purchased her new home in Beverly Hills. Or no, I'm sorry, I might not have said Beverly Hills. I'm sorry. Why did I say that? Was it Homie Hills? Crazy Days and Nights can be found. If you Google it, you can put in Crazy Days and Nights blind item and it will take you to their website. Um, this man has remained anonymous for like over 12 years. He's in the industry. He's a lawyer. People used to try to say it was, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Lots and lots of rumors about who it is because he's had, I mean, because his stuff is pretty, it, it's on point. He was the one that wrote about Laura Lee Jensen, the blind item for years before she was on, ever on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that had the accusations of the child, uh, all of that basically that's how people found out and i did want to clear up one thing about uh scandal and vanderpump rules and ariana buying this new house um some people i remember when this happened because for a while people were already just because ariana had such a hate for tom and she ever, you know, and and she was evident about it and she talked about it and stuff. People just assumed they weren't living together. There was a, con um, a content creator that came out. He did a TikTok that was like, I think that Ariana should not be made to be within 10 feet of this piece of garbage, Tom Sandoval. Like the network should give her a contract that says she doesn't have to be within 16 feet of him. And I was like, but she lives with him. <laughs> like why? Is but she lives with him. So I came out with a video and said, like, she's living with Tom. Like, they've been living together this whole time. So how come she wants all of us to hate him? And she hates him, but she doesn't hate him bad enough that she's not even living there. Like, hello, ladies. Any of you ladies know, if you catch your man cheating on you and you guys are living together, you're not going to be living together for very long, are you? No. You're not. Unless you're getting back together. And... At first, she said that she was waiting on her attorney to wait to work it out and that she um, had a dog and two and an elderly cat and that a move would be too much. And I was like, not the cats, not the cats. So anyways, then it came out that, you know, the whole thing that came out on the show and whatever. And now she's bought her home. So that's fantastic. We're happy for her. Um, but it wasn't people weren't trying to hate on her. People were not trying to hate on her at all. But you can't have everyone, you know, you wanting everyone to hate on Tom Sandoval and you have people making TikToks that think that your contract shouldn't make you have to be within 20 feet of this person, but you live with them. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, there's also a blind item that I posted on my Instagram. I'll read it for you guys. Um, it's about a housewife and her daughter that doesn't have the money for her car payment. Her car is about to get repossessed. Um, but her mom is like, hold on, honey, I got to get some Botox and fillers because that's just, I, I got important things to do. Okay. Let me read it for you guys. It has to be Tom Sand or it has to be uh, Kim Zolciak. Okay. It says this one was blind number 13 from March 29th, celebrity offspring. In parentheses, to mom, my car is going to be repossessed. Mom says, hang on, I need to spend the money on Botox and other fillers and treatments to my face. It's an investment for our future. Um, she needs to thank Tom and Rachel for producing such a great series. I know. It's crazy, right? I mean... I feel kind of bad for Rachel because she didn't come back and now she probably is pissed because she put, helped put that show back on the map and she's really not getting a cut of anything anywhere. And they said they made Tom, I think like they gave him a percentage of 
the show was it and then they also gave him like a small piece of one of lisa's restaurants or something like a one percent i don't know something like that millions of money ariana has oh yeah for sure and she's about to go host love island if rachel would have come back the ratings would have went through the roof i think so too barbara i do too i think that they really they should have gave her what she was asking for money wise and spent it because it would have been well worth it because now we're just back to what's next season gonna bring right just saying <laughs> um did you guys also hear about this one surprised me shazzle sunset mike um ex-fiance is suing him for a vicious and brutal dv attack saddened to hear that for sure because i've been watching the shots of sunset for many years i've always enjoyed them um i've always enjoyed mike and really rooting for him um he had a girlfriend her name was i want to call her pollyanna and that was not her name um beautiful girl i think a couple of children her ex-husband was wealthy I think he owned a water business. Um, her name is Paulina, excuse me. And this DV took place and it was in like the police blotter sort of situation. And so all the press and TMZ and bloggers knew that a situation had taken place at Mike's home, but we didn't know what happened because in the police report or whatever, it said that um, it said there were three adults present, three adults. So we're like, was Mike cheating on her and she came home and a domestic, you know, and a fight ensued? Or do they have some sort of a like kinky setup and somebody got, you know, and somebody got jealous? Like what happened? Well, it turns out the third adult was the nanny. The nanny. He did all this in front of the nanny. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a watered down what she says here. Um. She says they got into a heated argument over a, hook, a hookah on March 27th, 2022. And it did lead to him being arrested. And he does have um, like pew pews in the house. So they don't like that. She says the alleged situation began in verbal form and her then fiance yelling that she was a horrible mother and an effing uh Ho and a piece of HI, you know, piece on sure. It says she claims in the suit the shots of sunset ran into the room and forcefully um took her hair and her shoulders and very aggressively threw her to the ground. Um she has screenshots too, actually, as I put this all in my story on um HW Historian 2 on my Instagram and there are pictures from inside their residence, his home where they were staying. Um, he must have had cameras on the inside. And it does look very not great for him. Um, I think it's even worse that the, the children were there and that the nanny was there and he was acting like this. Because to me, it kind of makes me feel like he must be like this more regular than not. I don't know. I mean, this is just sad. I mean, he threatened to like on a liver. And, you know, he's a strong man. I mean, she, you know, men are, he's a very strong man. She tried to call 911. Um, she attempted to call 911 and he made it seem as if he were to strike her again, the lawsuit said. He continued to, you know, put his hand over her face, like almost like to not let her breathe. And again, children and nanny in the next room. That's when you know you have a serious problem. If somebody acts like that in front of a nanny, in front of employees, and I mean, that is crazy. Crazy. I hope that he gets help because that's sad. And he comes from a good family. I mean, both his brothers are like dentists. And his parents, I always felt bad for them on the show. Like his mother, I think maybe they just babied him too much or something. Because he was always like, you know, like something... He didn't get enough attention as like a child or something. Um, but here's the messed up part. She ended up going on vacation with him like two weeks later. The press, TMZ, caught them outside of, I think it was like Putankana with the kids. With the kids. I understand if you are in a relationship and you go back when you shouldn't. 
it happens, right? It's like the mental game and, and such. And we never want to shame victims. But if the victim is a mother, we have a responsibility to the children. And I just don't think that that, I can't believe like their dad, family wasn't like, I think, don't think this is a great idea that you take the kids. <laughs> like might be a little traumatizing for them. I mean, no, I'm just saying, maybe you could just go by yourself. I don't know. Maybe she, I don't know. But anyways, she's doing him. Um, I think it's for an undisclosed amount. I'm not surprised, but I, I don't even think his finances are all like that. I know that he had that building that he was redoing and putting like luxury apartments in it. And it was, he somehow ended up with this building that was like one street over was like sunset and it had been not, it was growing now. It was like a higher end area. So Hey, maybe it's Adam Sandler. That's really close to a holiday movie. Maybe. Barbara says, I'm not surprised about Mike from Michelle's a Sunset. I'm just surprised it took so long to come out. And that's like the sad part. It's 2024 and it took this long to expose this man. I mean, they're just people of privilege. I mean, look at P. Diddy. Took all this time. We've seen all these videos of him grooming people. We've seen the videos of him with Justin Bieber. We've seen the videos of Usher. We know these parents have signed over custody to these young men, giving them to these rappers to go live there and learn the life and learn the game and learn how to get bitches and hoes. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's crazy. And everyone just stepped back and thought, well, I mean, he's, he's a rapper. And so... I mean, they said that even Tupac was, I forget who I saw that did an interview that said that he did not like Puff Daddy and that he was like almost sort of kind of trying to expose him because thought that was like he was messed up. I don't know. I, I just think he's not arrested. Um, his drug mule has been arrested carrying the, the pink uh, Coca-Cola because that's, you know, that in the lawsuit, it said that he, P. Diddy would have everyone in his house, like the staff, had to carry around. Um, Bye, Kelly. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Oh, I thought you were leaving. He'll be on his way to. I mean, did you guys hear the voicemail that Suge Knight left him? I put it on Instagram. I put it on TikTok, but they muted it. Suge Knight called from prison. He left a voicemail with TMZ, and it was a message for Diddy. It was a two and a half message, two and a half minute message. It did not say, I hope everything works out for you. It said, when you get here, you're either going to piss to stand up or sit, or sit down to piss. Stand up and piss or sit down and piss. And only you you know, we'll decide. And don't come on in here with none of that brotherly love shit because th that's not how this goes down in here. Like, Shug Knight's like, you going... Diddy's probably in denial, I'm sure. It seems Mike had anger issues and rage issues. There was a dysfunction in his family through what I saw on the show that he wanted his parents' approval. And they went... I also felt like that, yeah, there was like something with the parents and the kids and um, Mike feeling maybe insecure with both of the brothers being uh, dentists. And that like happens in families because in, at one point in my family, we had like two teachers. And so it was always like when they got together, it was always the teacher talking, the teacher union and this and that. And like everyone else kind of feeling a little, I don't want to say like left out, but kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I feel like he greatly wanted approval from his mother, especially like there was something there. So. I agree, for sure. Um, but P. Diddy used to make everyone in his house um, that worked there, like all the maids and security and stuff, they had to carry around a pouch. And the pouch contained MJ gummies, the powder, the yayo, right? Um, uh, pain pills, the kind that you would take if you were diagnosed with cancer, those kinds. And something else. I can't remember what the other the other thing was. And he I'm talking his maids, his housewife, or his the maids, whomever was in the house working, they had to carry around this patch with this pouch with all of the narcotics in it. And then that way, no matter where he was at in the house, he always had what he wanted, whatever it was that he wanted. And so that's crazy. So P. Diddy's drug mule has been 
you know, taken into custody and was charged. I'm sure he posted bond by now, but, um, yeah. Did you guys watch, I did not watch this old question might be, whom did P did he make so mad that he's being exposed? I agree with you, KRH, that it, we didn't just wake up one day and because I think a lot of people have known about P, like some people that are a little bit more awake in their journey realized like a couple of years ago that these people, what the sick thing, like really, th because I, there would have been 10 years ago, my mind, my, my mind wouldn't have been able to think that these rap, that this was like going on in the music industry like this, but slowly so much has been uncovered and like unveiled to us that there's really just no denying it. And he could never be where he is today within an industry where he could so openly violate children and put videos on television of him and, and Justin Bieber and Usher and have parents sign custody with like people behind the scenes knew what was going on and they were okay with it. So what does that tell you? If you're okay with it, you're a part of it. So let me say a little bit. Thank you. I love you, Kelly. So let me say a little bit. His LA home was closest to the Getty Museum and under it are tunnels. They have verified, I'm pretty sure, I thought it was verified, that there were tunnels under his home. I wanted to say underwater tunnels. <laughs> I said that. Um, Joy of Everything on TikTok is a live content creator. He it was a producer on TMZ, and now he does his own content on TikTok. He will often cover P. Diddy Street. That is a great place to go look at some of his videos because you get a good feeling on the kind of street that P. Diddy lives on. He lives on one of the most expensive streets in the world in L.A. Um, actually, the one day his trash was out, <laughs> and Joy of Everything went and opened up the trash cans. There was literally like, I want to say 12 or 11 trash cans. And so he went up and opened the tops of them and you know to look into them just to see what was you know in them and it wasn't there was like pizza and cake it looked like whatever but um you get a good feel for the sort of street and neighborhood that he lives on and he's very close to where else allegedly had tunnels in la the playboy mansion playboy mansion has been around since the early 1900s it was remodeled there's been lots of rumors about underground tunnels also at the playboy museum which again is on this i think it's like on the street over from p diddy's and by the Getty Museum. And if you know, there was a young woman, and I think that her name was Ashley, and she was actually on the news, and she was very much advocating for, um, like, the rights of children and stuff, and she had talked about the Getty Museum and Oprah as well. I want to say that Tom Cruise also lived in a home over there. And Kelly, while you're going on and reading the blind items, maybe I'll look for it if I have a second. There was a blind item about a photographer, a paparazzi person that had heard the rumors about Tom Cruise. And he staked up in a tree for three days trying to get a photo of what he had heard or knew. And allegedly got the photo. And before he could make the sale of the photo, he was hit and killed somewhere in LA on the, in the streets. Did anyone else hear that story? I'm gonna say he was an actual paparazzi. I'll have to look for it another day because I, I thought it might pop up really easily, but I'm pretty sure it was a blind item from the crazy days and nights. By the way, he looks old. They probably have it buried so deep. You know how they do that when you put a Google search in? <laughs> They'll put like a ton of other content so that when you try to Google it, or, or stuff of what you're really looking for is like, so deep you can't even find it but you also if you're very interested in that then you should definitely look up who nicole kidman's father was um because that will give you a great insight to the sort of family that nicole comes from um 
and it would make you wonder why her and Tom would marry. And then make the movie Eyes Wide Shut, which was actually filmed at the Rothschild's mansion. Do you know who's married to a Rothschild? Class? Anyone? Nikki Hilton. She's married to Rothschild. These people are okay with it, have been through some thing coming up in the industry. This has been going on since the mob and the Alta took over the entertainment industry after World War II, in my opinion. I would probably say you're you're right on, but I honestly think Hollywood was um, evil from the start. I think that they even talk about, if you look up what a Holly stick is actually for, I don't know, but definitely after the super, the super soldiers that they were trying to make over in Germany um, and the, the mind control. So, I mean, we hear, Kanye West was talking about Jay-Z, you know, they're really coming at, hard at him with rumors and allegations of um, unaliving these young women and it's just crazy, crazy. But the Tom Cruise is a real thing. I'm going to have to look for that because now I'm very, very curious. And I think it's interesting. Like I said, look up who Nicole Kidman's father is. You will be completely disgusted. It's very much a generational thing in their family. And it would make you wonder why Tom would marry someone that might have her sort of um, practices. <laughs> Unless if he was part of it too. Just saying, and you never hear from their two children. They have two adopted children. Um, and then we know that he has a daughter that we never, I don't think she ever sees him. They say that they never see each other. And that was with, um, what was her name? She was on Dawson's Creek, Katie Holmes. I used to love Katie Holmes. I always thought she was so pretty. And when her and Tom got married, remember Tom went on Oprah and said how much he was in love with her and he was jumping on the couch on Oprah confessing his love for Katie Holmes. And you know there's a whole TikTok movement going on right now against the Scientologists. You gotta get on TikTok Live. They have started this group of young people. They started, first there is um, on LA, on Hollywood Boulevard by the Walk of Stars, there's a building that they use that they recruit people as people walk by, they recruit them. Um, they, they say uh, that they, they want to ask them a survey. They bring them into this actual building. They pull them off of Hollywood Boulevard and say, oh, yeah, we're going to do this personality test on you. And then they get them in there. One guy said they had him. They said they almost kept him overnight there. That his friend had to come there and be like, I, I want my I need my friend. And they were like, your friend's not here. And they're like, yeah, yes, she is. Yes, she is. Because I thought, you know, I've been waiting out here for her. Um. They want their money too. Anyways, the Scientology people have this building um, outside where they recruit people and they have young, young people working inside the building, right? So probably everyone's under 25 maybe. So the TikTokers filming live content, you know, they go outside of like Craig's night or Craig's restaurant to try to catch the, you know, famous people. If there's an event going on, um, that sort of thing, right? So they started hanging out when they found out what these people were doing when they were recruiting people off of Hollywood Boulevard. And so a couple of them started posting up because again, the building doesn't open until like four o'clock in the afternoon. It's like an afternoon nighttime sort of gig. And the people that work there, the, science, the young Scientologists, they also live together. Do you wanna know where they live? They followed the bus. There's a bus that drops them on and off. These these young TikTokers ain't got nothing. I mean, they are on it, guys. Literally. Anyways, they they are dropped off there by bus and picked up by bus. And they live in the blue Scientology building. If you know anything about Scientology, um, there's like the huge, massive building, the blue one that you always like. If you look it up and you see it on TV, um, that's there's like a whole other side to it in the in the behind and that's where um there's like rooms and bedrooms and they sleep there so the tiktokers started hanging out outside there and when they would try to recruit people obviously the tiktokers would be like no 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 you don't want to go in there like that's a cult <laughs> don't go in there. and some of the people that worked there were very sweet and they would like you know they would kind of mess with each other jokingly not anything crazy 
Well, then, of course, it got crazy because older people that were Scientology, I don't know who, you know, the ones that drive around these vehicles that, like, don't have license plates and shit, like, they would come, they started coming there and, and hanging out outside, but not, um, they weren't with the TikTokers, they were actually people trying to sabotage the TikTokers, but they weren't, wouldn't even identify themselves as Scientologists. They would try to pretend and like be nice and chat and talk to the TikTokers and people in the live would be like, yo, that guy seems suspicious, right? And then things would pop off. They would get, they would cause um, altercations and then the police would come or they would uh, call 911 and call for an ambulance, even though they didn't need an ambulance, right? So then the TikTokers decided, let's go to Danny Masterson, who was a Scientologist, who is now in prison. He was on that 70s show. I think he got life or something. He was going to a restaurant by his home in the Hollywood Hills that's owned by another Scientologist. And that's where he was putting things in women's drinks. And then it was easy for him because the restaurant was right by his house. So he could walk the girl out and take her right up to his house and do whatever it was that he was doing. So that restaurant's still open. People are still eating there. And so this, the people, the TikTokers, have now taken to going to the restaurant to protest and, you know, support Danny Masterson's victims, which is a lot different than what we saw from Ashton Kutcher and his wife, Mila Kumez, who actually wrote letters in support of Danny Masterson um, to try to get him a lighter sentence. So if you're ever bored, California is, um, you, if you know, you make sure that you're mindful of California time. Um, but there is like probably a good, I don't know. There's one gentleman, he's actually a journalist. Um, he's Russian, but he's here and he's gotten in on the, you know, the movement as well. And he's covering it and a lot of different TikTokers. So if you're ever bored at night and you have a TikTok account, Go check out the people that are protesting Scientology because that's crazy. But I have to go. I gotta go to my other job. And I'm tired. <laughs> and it was Easter yesterday and my house is messing as Easter stuff everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, guys. Make sure that you hit that like button, please. Make sure that you follow, please. Make sure that you put your turn, turn your notifications on as well. Um, I keep saying to you guys, I'm keeping my content coming on my YouTube channel and putting more and more out, concentrating more on my following on YouTube. So make sure you guys stay tuned because I'll have much more content coming for you guys. Um, leave any comments and any subjects that you may have questions on or you would like to hear more on. Definitely put it in the comments because I will go check those out. And I hope that all of you guys have a great Monday. Bye.